Hello and welcome back to episode 8 of my mechanism tutorial. Well, it's probably going to be the last episode, I think, because I decided to skip optimizations. It's kind of a, a boring subject for, uh, you know, a, a particular episode. So why don't we go and look at what we've got left? Um, whoops. We've got uh, pretty much all of our ore processing done, which leaves the only thing left in mechanism <laughs> to be the reactor. Hmm. Yes. Those of you who thought the five times or generation process or processing process um, was a complicated one may not want to do this this particular thing. But because I'm so nice to you guys, I've done it for you. So let's start with what we need for the, the reactor. Well, it's a fusion reactor. And that kind of means, well, uh, any of you familiar with fusion, mean, means we need deuterium and tritium. Um, and those are pretty complicated to get. Let's go and have a look how we get them. Um, that should be enough time before it goes dark. I've moved my um, portal away from where it was. Uh, excuse the actual chunks generating. And begun a new set of machines. So let's just start with uh, this one. This is Brian, just as we've normally seen it before. Uh, it exits out, putting it into a tank, just like we've seen before. It's empty. That's not surprising because there is another tower here and this is in a new mode. If instead of water you insert brine, which is what this is doing, pulling and pushing, into one of these towers, you will get uh, liquid lithium out of the other side and that's where this next tank is. Now again, this would be something other than empty and it really is going to go dark on me, isn't it? Or just cloudy. Never mind. Um, yeah, so this is liquid lithium. This wouldn't be empty if um, I was I was making enough lithium, which depends on me making enough brine, which means more of these towers. Um, don't worry about that for the moment. Beyond here, everything that we've seen so far is pretty much what we've already done. You know, same processes. Much the same here. I've just got a couple of towers going, and it really is going dark. A um, couple of towers going, producing a bit of power. And these are new. I'll come back to these in a second. But what it's basically doing here is we're taking liquid lithium. We are using a rot rotary condensator. <laughs> I'm going to use the saying that now. Uh, and if we look at it, it's changing from liquid to gas. So we want the gaseous form of lithium. And it's going into these pressurized tubes, which are just gases. And I've laid out some more lines. Rainstorm. Just what I need on a YouTube video. And it goes into the bottom of these solar neutron activators, which we're going to come back to. And out of those comes uh, more gaseous uh, pipes, pressurized tubes, and that gets converted into liquid. This is what comes down here and goes into this tank. This is one of our two fuels, tritium. There's only 40 buckets in this tank but because the tank doesn't show how much stuff is in it. You end up with something that looks full. So that's tritium, and I'm keeping it in liquid form just because I have this big tank. Uh, if you didn't want to do that, and the reason why I have this big tank of liquid is that I then pull it out and into an ender tank. Because then I can move it with liquids across dimensions and across uh, everywhere I want it to, do, to go. That's one half of the fuel situation. The other half is deuterium, and I'm not building all of this on camera just because I'm trying to fit this into a... <laughs> Maybe try fruitlessly to pick this, fit this into an episode, and I've got all kinds of things spawning around. Let's uh, look at these. Now we know how I've been avoiding using electric pumps for most of this because they're terrible and they just end up draining water. I decided to go with three by three instead of one by three, and hopefully they're going to work without draining the entire pool because you have to use electric pumps for this because these have uh, a gas upgrade, a filter upgrade this time, and when you put that in, you will get heavy water instead of water out of it. Okay and don't come any closer um to set those up make sure when you do put a block underneath the pump first because if you put the pump down before fitting the filter to it it'll start pumping water up which you can then can't get rid of very easily so put a block underneath it and uh, that should be enough so then we've got the coming out of the top of these just some mechanical pipe which is going to take fluids and i'll connect all the rest of these up once i 
get a chance to balance this properly. But again, this is going to... Let me just, just maybe we should go and sleep. I'll explain what was over there, <laughs> just while I uh, while I run away and sleep. Um, over there, there's an electrolytic separator, and that's go go go. That is going to change um, the heavy water, and it's going to extract deuterium, which is what we want. Uh, there's then another. Um, Rotary condensator, just over here. Uh, I really should get some other fast way to run when doing uh, this laying out of stuff. But yeah, just another one of these rotary condensators, and that is then pumping it into a liquid form and into this tank again with another ender tank. Um, this does mean, however, I'm going to need another couple of these machines on the other side converting it back to gas, but I'm not too concerned. I don't want all this kind of size of thing, because it's huge, anywhere near the inside of my base. Uh, so I will leave them out here. So that's the first kind of third of things. The second third is going to be the reactor itself, and the third third, third third? Yeah, last third, is going to be... Um, how we fire it up and that involves lasers and everyone loves lasers so what i think i'm going to do is off camera i'm going to ex excavate this room outwards and you notice i've put my ender tanks in here already just a reminder i'm going to get rid of this um the the blah, blah. i'm going to get rid of the mining machine i'm going to get rid of pretty much everything in here and i'm going to expand this room a little bit i'm going to put my reactor in here i think and the lasers are going to be further back or something along those lines um yes yeah, so i'm going to do that off camera and i'll come back when that's done all right so let's start the reactor build uh we're going to need a full stack of steel casings yep full stack and some atomic alloys again probably about a quarter and that should give us a full stack of reactor frames and let's start with the reactor frames. We may need some more, to be honest, here. But let's give that a go. So, don't want to build this into the ground. Mm, probably not. So, I'm going to put down a 3x3. Three three. And then at each centre of the, each face of the 3x3. Three three, wow, I'm getting some lag. Um, that seems to be going to be too big for this room. Yeah, I'll cope. So, in the centre of each face, so you end up with this star pattern. Then, on the outside of that, we're going to need to build outwards. So, um, just place a block on top of each of the jutting out parts, and then extend outwards. We'll need to replace some of this with other blocks later, but, yeah, we're just sizing things for the moment. There we go. That's layer two. Third layer is pretty much the same, but with corners now. So we have... This is where I'm going to have to drop out of the... Uh, out of the middle. It's just about going to fit, but... Now I have to expand the room a little bit more. There we go. And as you can see, it's probably... It looks kind of like one half of a sphere, and that's what we're kind of aiming for. So let me just put some... Blocks down here, so I can get to this a little bit easier. Why won't you place? Okay. And then we do the same, but in reverse. So um, we're going to have a layer without corners. Oh yeah, the torch is slightly annoying. Um, I'll leave them out for now. There we go, and again on top we want just like we had before. And then we're gonna have to fill the rest in. And <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to place a block there. I'm gonna have to go back and do that. I'm one short, really. Well, I'm too short because the other side. Uh, yeah. Although, to be honest, um, I'm gonna need to replace some of these blocks anyway. So to replace some of these blocks, what I probably want to have is 
Let's knock a couple of block as, blocks out here. So I probably want that one to be gone because I'm going to be feeding the lasers from this side. So that's going to need to be the, the focus of the lasers. I probably want uh, that one gone and this one gone. Oh, that's annoying. There we go. <laughs> Get it back. And to be honest, this front side be nice to be able to see what's in there. So I wonder if I can just uh, take this out. There we go. And I can place a block down here now, one there and one there. And then I'll put, build a front face here out of uh, the next component, which is reactive glass. So I think that's just glass in the middle of some of these, is it? Reactive glass? Yeah, it is just glass in the middle. Uh, well, a few of those. Uh, how many at once? Four at once. I'm going to be short. Never mind. Um, Let's just put this in place and hopefully everything will fit. I'm going to craft a couple more, but I'll do that off camera. Yeah, one left. Anyway, that's the kind of outline. Let me just go and make a few more and finish this off and I'll come back right back. All right, so I've crafted a few more and we need a few more items. Uh, one is a laser focus um, that is made with, what's the glass? There we are. Reactive glass like this makes two focus foci, but we don't need those. Uh, we don't need two, we need one. Um, and the other thing is we need some uh, React ports. They need ultimate control circuits, which are the elite ones surrounded by atomic alloy. So I'm going to make three of those because we need some more. There we go. Uh, the controller, which is the very top middle block, is going to need a gas tank. Yeah. Why am I always being asked to make gas tanks? I should craft an absolute huge amount of them and just have them available. Except they don't stack, which is even worse. And uh, let's just grab that and yeah, we just grab a gas tank. Whoops. One gas tank and probably going to need a couple of the glass panes. Uh, one there, one there was it. And then a gas tank, some reactor frames. And what was the final block? Oh, it's just Wrong way around, that's why. <laughs> that works better. There we go, one controller. And uh, what I was going to say, input ports. So that's... I'm going to get two of those. Okay, let's go and finish off this assembly. So, as you see, I've finished off the front face of this. I'm hoping that these this allows me to see in. If not, I may have to replace these corners with uh, with proper, proper frames. But, yeah, we'll give it a go. So, I've got a reactor port there. And one there. And then I'm going to need to put the controller in place. So, let's just put you inside the top. And on this side, the... Focus. It looked like it changed something. Uh, I'm going to have to clear more room, aren't I? <laughs> Let me get to the controller. It's up here somewhere. There we go. There's the controller. Incomplete. Oh, what's incomplete? Is it just because I have connecting blocks at the top here I need to dig out? Or is it those reactive glasses at the front? It's probably the reactive glass at the front, but... Here's me really wanting a nice display. Are you still incomplete? Yeah, you are. Okay. Let's just put some more torches up here for now. And let's go and see if that was the issue. That's uh, 
Remove you. And you, you, and you. And do I have four spare? I do. So let's see if that's enough to make it change. That looks a little different now. Formed! Great, so that was it. So we've got a few panels in here, a little bit different to the other machines. We've got heat, obviously this is going to be a fusion reactor. We've got fuel, and these are our deuterium and tritium. Uh, which reminds me, is that, are they ports for fuel or are they ports for power? I'm hoping they're ports for fuel. Yeah, well, we'll see when I try it. Uh, statistics, yeah. Um, we'll come back to that once we've set up the lasers. So let me just clean up this room a little bit more and then we'll continue and probably look at the laser side of things. Okay, we're about ready to construct the lasers, but I did remember one thing I forgot to show you. Uh, it was earlier in the process, solar neutron activators. Those things outside on the sand that look like a dish shape on top. Um, these kind of things. And this requires a bit of a new process. Most of these things you've all seen before, these ingredients, apart from this thing at the top, the HDPE sheet. Uh, and I think that's high density polyethylene. <laughs> I looked it up. Uh, which needs these pellets in an enrichment chamber, which needs a pressurized reaction chamber fed with liquid ethylene. We use normally use gaseous ethylene oxygen. And remember that substrate that I had running over here. Yeah, well, it's now useful. So <clears throat> I have this converting ethylene into liquid ethylene, which goes into pressurized reaction chamber with oxygen. And that I can drop this in. I can get some pellets out if I want. Um, yeah, it's quite slow. So I'm just going to leave that running. I'd already made some ahead of time. Um, those that were out here in the... Oh, it's probably going to go dark. Oh, no, it's morning. Um... Why do I have F7 mode on? Uh, those out here, I should note, there's a lot of space uh, set out for this because these are really, really, really slow. I mean, yeah. I'm just about keeping up the lithium. That's using everything I've got so far. To keep this in balance, I'm probably going to... For every lithium tower, you're probably going to need about 10 full-size um, brine towers. Just bear that in mind, you might not want to go overboard on, on this if you want to keep up. Um, you might just want to uh, use it to run run the reactor part of the time and then um, store it all in batteries or, you know, energy cells, sorry, whatever they're called. Um, however, the reactor reduce, uh, produces an awful lot of power. Mechanism doesn't really have, I don't think, uh, a huge energy um, storage mechanism, but in this pack, which is the uh, the Daybreaker pack, I think, is there a Draconian? Uh, draconian? No. Uh, I was kind of hoping there'll be a massive power storage uh, method, but well, these will have to do these ultimate, uh, well, that's just basic, but that's an ultimate one. Okay, where was I? Lasers, lasers! Right, so lasers are, let's have a look fun and useful, but they need a few things to, to be made. Um, I've pretty much got all of these. I probably need some more diamonds. Uh, let's say maybe we want 10 of these. I do have this auto project table just making these as and when I want to feed it with gold. So if I make a couple now and then, you know, I'll do the rest off camera. Um, do I have the rest of the materials? It looks kind of like I do. So Yes. Oh, by the way, one comment by one of the people viewing uh, said the reason why I was so frustrated with shift clicking things into place, uh, if they don't stack, they can't be shift clicked into place, which seems incredibly annoying. But at the same time, that's just apparently the way things work. So, yeah, I wish it would be otherwise. Someone get on that and fix that in the basic uh, version of Minecraft. Um, so here we've got a couple of lasers, and I wanted the other piece as well, which is the laser amplifier. That requires an energy cube, which requires more of these. Thankfully, I have a couple more. Um, uh, 
Ah, uh, okay, some steel and some redstone. Uh, <laughs> of course I can't shift click in. There we go, and it's just the steel casing, isn't it? Fine. What else do I need? Uh, I need this. Ah, I need some steel. Thankfully, I have lots of that now, and I've got that production line, and this should be everything. Okay, now I'm going to need to run some power out to this, but bear this in mind um, when you're setting your room out you're going to be wanting power um, some blocks so the way that we fire this thing up is if I put a couple of blocks uh, let's say here oh that would be the one with the carpenter's block <sighs> alright let's put a couple of blocks uh, one further back We're going to be firing a laser into that, and the way we do this is through an amplifier. And we want to set the amplifier. Uh, what mode am I in? I want wrench, I think. I'm going to set, yeah, if I just right click, it'll set the direction of the output, which is this side. Also, on these others, I'm going to um, be feeding in lasers. This thing is going to concentrate all of the lasers. So I'm going to have at least two of these amplifiers. And lasers are going to shoot in everywhere. Apart from... Uh, I, could do the oh, I don't think I've got any wood on me. Um, seems like an awful... Oh, maybe I do. Uh, do I have... Yeah, I do. Cool. That will do. I just want this. But there we go. Lever. And we're going to put that underneath this amplifier at the back. There we go. So that's going to basically cut things off from firing into the reactor. Uh, now I'm going to need to position these, uh, these lasers. Um, I want them firing the same direction could put them into the walls to be honest that would probably look better yeah there we go that looks better a warning about lasers in real life and in Minecraft they can kill you this is not the Railcraft laser system you cannot just bathe in the light of the almighty laser while getting some kind of suntan, um, these will set you on fire and carve you into little pieces. Um, mainly just set you on fire. But the idea is we're going to fire into here and probably one from the ceiling or something along those lines. And then I'm going to have another amplifier further back with another set of lasers. The idea of these amplifiers, by the way, if I right click on them, they're going to store up a lot of energy. And until I flip this switch, all that energy is going to be stored in this amplifier. When I flip the switch, it's going to fire into the actual the uh, reactor, which I'm going to uh, be feeding this with fuel and another item that's going to be coming up quite shortly and inside there when I get to the controller inside there there's going to be uh, the fuel being injected and I'm going to fill in the DT fuel uh, using something called a holram or holram don't know how to pronounce that uh, I'm going to set the injection rate to 4 initially so let me just go and make all those lasers and then I'm going to run all the power this is going to consume an almighty huge amount of power. So just bear this in mind, you don't want to do this or try to do this early game. It will continue storing that power, so you don't have to have much, but you'll have to wait a long time to fire up the reactor if you don't have a large amount feeding it. So just bear that in mind. Anyway, off to construct the rest of the lasers, and I'll come right back. All right, so I think I've everything set up now. Now let's go and have a look what we've got. Um, I did more lasers in which is great. Uh, I added 10 of these these energy cubes. These are the top level ones, even though it says basic energy cube. You may think that 10 is um, too much. It's probably too little. <laughs> we'll see <laughs> once I turn this thing on. And I've discharged about three 
of those into this laser amplifier. That's how much three gets you. Not so much, I and mean, it may not even be enough to fire this thing up. So, you know, I'll give it a go and we'll see where we get to from there. Um, let's just pop downstairs and you'll see I have a change things a little bit. Um, let's explain this. Uh, where should we start? Okay, either end of um, our fuel supply up there comes down and into the rot rotary condensator, turns gets, gets turned into gas and gets sent up here and into this port of the reactor. It also continues on and into this chemical infuser, and the same thing is mirrored exactly the, the same on the other side. Let me just put some torches. And in here, then the two can be combined into. Uh, DT fuel, which is what we're going to do soon. So now I've got everything set up there. I should just be able to just turn the valves on these, I think. There we go. One valve. Two valves. And that should start feeding into the reactor the, uh, itself. There we go. Deuterium and tritium. The reactor won't combine them, however, until it's actually running. So be bear that in mind. And that's one of the reasons why we need this chemical infuser it's going to be, be combining the, the two into DT fuel so now that's that's combining these two uh, we're going to need to make sure we've got power access here uh, by the way if, if I didn't mention what that is that's the actual connector that goes to all the lasers so normally I've just been before these were here I've put an energy cube right there and connected it so that it discharges um, the machines down below are not connected to all of this yet. Uh, they're connected directly back to the base, or the rest of the base. I just want to keep the two power systems alone while I actually look at just how much power I'm able to get out of this. So three power cubes in, and I've got ten power cubes that could be potentially filled here, which are probably going to be completely filled and uh, overwhelm the home system. But, um, yeah, the other thing I need is a hull. Hull? 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 How rum? Yeah, it's in here somewhere. Where are you? Where's the reactor stuff? Ah, there we are. Whole rum. Fine. <laughs> Neither there. Um, so which is just some smashed up gold, I think. So let's just get some... Oh, down to eight gold, really. Okay. I uh, may have to go and get some more gold soon. So let's crush that up. And we're going to put in the metallic infuser with coal, which is the steel production side of things. There we go. And then I'm going to have to go back to the infuser. And we're going to fill this up. I think of this as like a, well, it's a capsule basically containing DT fuel that a laser is going to hit, pour a ton of energy into. And there we go. And then hopefully, um, yeah, fuse. And I'm really hoping there's no chance of uh, explosions with this thing. But we're about to find out. So if I put the whole ROM in there, or Oh, if anyone knows how that's pronounced, let me know. <laughs> uh, fuel, deuterium and tritium, that's all ready. Heat, we don't have any yet. 300 Kelvin, which is room temperature. Um, and statistics. So, yeah, let's see what we get out of this. Will you power up, I wonder? Give it a try. Wow, was that... Was that, that was all the energy... <laughs> What temperature did we get to? Statistics, uh, heat. We got to 30 million. Right, we need about 10 times, well, at least 200 million Kelvin, or maybe 300 million Kelvin. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to connect this up to the rest of the base and let that charge it, rather than using one of these that's portable. So I can do that. Mm, I just run a cable, actually. If I run... One down here. I've got a hollow stone cover. Go on fast mode, hopefully not. Yeah, there, there it is. 
that's a link to the base. So if I just run a cable, and this is normally around the time where I figure out I don't have any cable, but that's uh, actually not too bad this time. This will, of course, probably drain my entire base, but I'm not too concerned about it just yet. I just want to get everything running. There we go, and this is probably then going to cause... <laughs> That's why I put the hole before there. You don't want to go into one of those. Okay, so, yeah, I'm not going to watch that on camera. Um, I'm going to fill it up to maybe halfway, and let's see what happens. And we're approaching one gigajoule, and... Um, it's emptied the power out of my entire base. The laser, that's why the lasers are flickering. They can't keep up. So I'm hoping that this time it will fire up. If not, I'm going to have to wait for quite some time. That's one gigajoule. Okay, let's give this a go. Flick. And that looks like it's powered. Yep, there's the reaction. So let's have a look. Uh, there goes the whole horom. Uh, fuel is not being pulled in yet. Heat has hit 100 million Kelvin, that's fine. Uh, statistics. Uh, oh, there we go. So, it is storing quite a lot. It can't output all of it at once, I suspect. It is started pulling out because these have begun... Yeah, if I turn it off, that should keep going. These have begun, uh, you know, not flickering anymore. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I mean, look at this they're all charging really quite rapidly so we've got a working reactor and um yeah the, the downside of course to this is if you can't keep the reaction going if my i don't produce fuel fast enough then i'm gonna have to wait to charge this back up but that's why i've turned it off now just to let these recharge and they are recharging uh there we go yeah all of these 10 are charging up Ah, well, those aren't yet. Uh, have I not connected this right? Maybe it can only be pulled out from one. Yeah, maybe it can only be pulled out from one port. That's a bit disappointing. But um, I may have to go and upgrade all my cabling to be able to cope with this now. Because if you look at this, it's, um, it's pretty much storing everything you think it's creating. <laughs> and the plasma is still increasing. That's good. But for some reason, it is not pulling in DT fuel, and I don't know why. I can always um, I can always fix that by just using the chemical infuser. Uh, I should put a little hatch down here. I can always pipe this into like a new port here or something like that. But I assume that it could be pulled in from separate input ports. I'll keep my, my eye on it, but it is actually built and it is working, which is really, really good. Yeah, that's recharging. They take an age to recharge. And uh, they're all charging up as well. I think that they're coming through. Oh, no, wait, no, it is being output. That's draining. Yeah, I mean, all 10 are now full. <laughs> That's under a minute. So, yeah, I'm probably going to need more of those energy cubes, at least if I keep this to pure mechanism. Which I am. So that is pretty good. I've got the reactor up and running. And hopefully if you follow along, you should be too. Um, I know this has been a fairly in-depth episode with lots and lots of stuff. But it's important to just get everything right for that this last uh, episode. One final thing, and something that I haven't really covered, but is fairly elementary. Um, is just bear in mind, if you need more capacity, there are factories for pretty much each of these. So... Um, the factory just processes more than um, more than one stack at once. Um, where are they? Here they are. So basic smelting factory, advanced. Uh, hang on, advanced smelting factory, and uh, elite smelting factory, and they just handle. Um, I think it's something like three, five, and seven stacks at once. But of course you needed a lot of power to do those, which you now have an abundance for your own games. So that's uh, pretty much it for the mechanism tutorial, I think. Eight parts, good enough for anyone. I may well start on Rotary Craft next, so if you'd love to subscribe, like, share this out with other people, um, I'm more than happy to do that. Bear in mind, if you are watching this video, it is Halloween, um, and the... Me uh, 
mechanism. I've got mechanisms on the brain now. The uh, the uh, Infinity Evolved pack has just come out, which is the Infinity Hard mode or Infinity Expert mode, as it's now called. Um, and I think I may well be starting a new, well, my typical Let's Play series on that because I've looked into it and it is really rather rather hard and um, kind of forces you into uh, progression. So that should be something that should be interesting to cover. But for now, um, this is me, Gradus, the signing off. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.